All right, man, we are on. Rich, what's up, man? Thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm glad what's to be going here. on in Cookville right now? Oh, man, we're, we're now, I guess, we're stuck in this weird, you know, I guess it's off-season for us, technically. I'm uh, just trying to have some fun working out. It's hard, though, because we've got Haley here. She's training for the games. We're not training for anything. Um, so we're still <laughs> trying to push her, I guess. But, um, you know, when I get into the middle of a workout, and I'm like, man, I got a whole year to kind of get ready. Um, try not to, not to burn myself out in August, I guess. That's right. You always said that at the end of the games, you'd already start, start thinking about next yeah. year. Yeah. So. Now, that's I guess we, that's exactly that's where we are. Um, so, man, today I want to talk about programming. Um, you're programming the events for BCS Classic, yep. and we're super excited about that. I know a lot of the people have, have seen – now we've released all the workouts except for the what the one rep max is going to be, and I figured we'd do that today. We'd let them know. Might as well. Might as well. Yep. And, and so – the first question is, man, when did you uh, get into programming? Because I think as a CrossFitter, we start doing this thing, right? And we're following whether it was main site, another affiliate, and you got to fall, you fall in love with the programming. But at some point, yep. you have fallen in love with the art of it. And so when did that for start sure. for you? I mean, I, honestly, I think it was day one, you know. Um, followed main site every once in a while we would you know take ideas from there but you know in the beginning we didn't have all the equipment so you kind of had to modify stuff so I guess it really started there but then yeah I, I remember the day that we decided to start working out twice a day I remember back in the level ones basically they tell you you would die if you worked out twice a day and I remember the day we were like hey let's try a second workout and we didn't die so from <laughs> then on we were like ah oh, let's just do two a day from now in so even if we followed main site for a while, you still had to make up a second workout to do. So, uh, yeah, I think just over the years of really screwing it up for so much. And um, I don't know, I just, that's just where my brain goes. And that's, I really enjoy the programming side of, of things and coming up with numbers and making things make sense in my head. And it's a blessing and a curse where, you know, if I see somebody else's workout, I start immediately, my brain goes to like ripping it apart about how the numbers don't make sense or the stimulus isn't there. I mean, people could do that with my workouts as well, but I, I just, I don't know. I, I enjoy it and I enjoy, I guess, even being critical on some stuff. And um, it's just something I've found yeah, that I actually really enjoy. I think as I've been in CrossFit um, for these years and, and studied a lot of different people's programming from not just like I'm, criticizing it, but more so appreciating it, right? When you've got yeah. the CrossFit games, yep. you've got other competitions, you've got other affiliates. And, and I would say there's two types of people, you know, there's the people that really dive into the, the science, the charts, yeah. the, yep. the diagrams and the, you know, check marks that well, we've done X, Y, Z. And then there's people that, you know, and, and I think you fall in this category. They just, it's just a gift, right? Like you just write it on the board and then you might erase something and then you write something else and then you do it. And then later you do something else and it beautifully works together. Right. Yeah. A lot of it's based off of feel, you know, and for me, I think one of the advantages we have um, is we do a lot of the workouts, you know, like most 99.9% .9 of the workouts that go through or come through our programming have been tested by one of us or all of us um, at a high level. And so we kind of know the stimulus and we've done all these different things and know how things go together and how it works together and how it doesn't work together. And I guess really one of my also, you know, we talk programming, but one of my passions as well is like team programming. I feel like a lot of people don't quite grasp, um, you know, having done individual for years, I feel like individual, you know, a lot of people have a pretty good grasp on that, but team wise, um, even pairs or whatever, it's, that's something that people can't, are still not quite learning. And so being able to compete as an individual and then compete on a team, I can kind of, I feel like that's something that I have learned over the years, what works instead of it just all, you know, you look at sometimes with team competitions or team workouts, it's like, all right, here's a hundred reps of each thing, split them up however you want. And I'm like, that's not a set, that's not a real good test of a team. Yeah. And so, um, I, I don't so know. We just when you over the years. for an, a, a competition, and we'll dive into the ones for this at competition. But when, like, take last year's Mayhem Classic, yep. you're, you're trying to find the fittest individual. Like, you know, what was your process for that? Like, how did Rich process, the, you know, the events? Honestly, you know, it was looking. You know, anytime we came up or, or did a training session where I was like, man, that's a good workout. You kind of know, like 
you know a difference between a training session workout and a, like a competition workout? Um, it's, I guess it's hard to kind of explain that, but you just, after over years, you know, like one, I personally don't think strict pull-ups should be in a, a, a competition. Uh, I really don't think push-ups should necessarily be in a competition because people cheat those. And so there's certain movements you try to shy away from because you know that they're one, they're, you've got to do a, a jo good job of, of taking the judge out of human error out of play. Um, and try to make the standards as simple as possible. That's something we tried to do with uh, when we were going to have madness and do the qualifier workouts. It's like, let's take all these stupid little, like, two-foot takeoff thing out of there. Like, who cares? You know, get over the box, get over the rower. If somebody's faster stepping over, step over. It's like, and, it, and we, as the games and as CrossFit's kind of evolved, I think the games has done a good job of that. Um, so that's just something I look at as, as far as, like, standards immediately. But then, just like I said, looking at workouts – doing a workout, I'm like, man, it's a pretty good test. I'd like to see somebody else do that, see if they could beat that. And then, you know, having options, I guess, with different movements, different time domains, and making sure we're kind of, you know, you look at, go to a level one, and you, you see what CrossFit's definition of fitness is. We try to test somebody in all different areas, you know, the different metabolic pathways, and then the 10 general physical skills. I think you take those two uh, definitions of fitness and combine them into one. I think you're you're well on your way to finding a really fit individual. As this sport evolves, right, over the, the next decade and beyond, you're going to have a lot of people coming into the programming space, and there are already, but yeah. you know, we, we've seen it really in the last five years, even with yep. affiliate programming. But right. as competitions grow and you're going to just – now, personally, I don't think very many people can say that they have competed at the highest level – as many times as you have, right? So, right, right? so the reason I want to ask this question is because how much of that, like you're being a CrossFit Games athlete individually for four years, being a team athlete for five, not, not just at like an in-house competition. I'm talking right. about the highest level from, you, like you said, judges, er, human error. Was that fun? <laughs> you know? Right, exactly. How, yeah. how did that you feel? There's all those things that play in because it's like you want the athletes to have fun, uh, but not every workout can be fun. You know, there has to be some workouts that are like, I hate gut check or grunt type workouts, but though there is a need for that, uh, but definitely a need for high skill stuff as well to test that. You also want the fans to be enjoying uh, what they're watching because really without them, you don't have a show. So there's a, there's a lot that goes into it. You kind of look at, all right, how can we, you know, and, and I think the games has done a great job. I keep coming back to that of like telling a story, you know, as an athlete at times, you're kind of frustrated when they make you break it up at certain places because there's no, you know, if you had a, a, a rep scheme in your head that you thought, all right, I can beat somebody here, but we have to break it into threes. That's super frustrating, but I see the point of it. Like there, at some point there's a balance between the athlete and the event coordinator and the spectators. And then you got to look at space and then you got to look at equipment and then you got to, you know, there's so many different things yeah. and the number of judges you're going to have, like, you know, especially on team stuff, um, you know, if you're going to have a bunch of different movements, um, you've got to like make sure that, you know, you don't need six different judges really one to two is, is probably your top, you know, your limit on that. But um, it's just, it's, I, I enjoy it. Uh, you know, it's, How much it's of your history at that level has influenced and helped you write programs? Oh, immensely. I mean, like I, said, I, you know, I've been to some events, events that I was like, wow, I'll never do that event again, or wow, that was a really well done event. And even at the events that you're like, oh, that was crap, there's still something you can take away. Mm -hmm. um, you know, something good or even something bad that you know, yeah. all right, well, we won't do that. And um, so, yeah, there's there's all. I mean, like you said, it's ten years. It would you say kind of in a state of vulnerability, is there any exposed weakness because you've competed at that level in programming? Yeah, for sure. I mean, like I said, I'm, I know for sure I, I excel and I'm way better at uh, stuff with a little bit of skill. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if it's grunt work, I, and part of that, part of that is, you know, I've been doing it for 10, 11 years. I just don't really want to push that hard on those grunt grunt yeah. type workouts I feel like I don't have anything to prove you know it's just like all right this isn't fun so yeah. you know, I try to you know me personally I I would rather especially in a competition that's not for 
uh, you know, the games or something like that. We want to make it a little bit more fun, you know? Yeah. So it's a great segue into BCS classic. There we go. That's yep. what it's about, man. It's a fun yep. event. So let's dive into the events and, you know, give me a little insight into how you came up with it. You know, was this some like secret workout you did one time that you were like, Oh, this would be so cool with a partner. Here's how it would look. Or the first, yeah, one, the, the first event, which is the yep. three calorie, and I will go through RX versions, and we're yep. not going to go into intermediate or scale. It's just going to be cool. the RX. Yep. So 30, 20 calorie bike row, 30 for the guys, uh, 20 for the ladies, which two people working at a time, you choose, anybody can be on either one. Then you go to a barbell, you've got 60 power snatches as a team, and yep. then you transition back to the 30 or 20 for ladies calorie bike row. Again, doesn't matter who gets on what and then finish with 60 clean and jerks at 135. So yep. how did you come up with it? Yeah, so it's, it's a little bit of a, an old regional type workout that we did. Um, I don't even remember the exact workout, but it had the, the bike and row thing in there. Uh, but they were actually, you did your 30s, uh, 30 and 20, and then you switched to the other machine and did 30 and 20. So I kind of broke it up with the barbell. Everybody likes to lift the barbell. Um, you know, it's not CrossFit if you don't have Grace or Isabel somewhere in there. So we're going to do it twice. Technically, you know, it's still single Isabel, single Grace in there. Yeah. Um, you know, you look at a lot of these programs and, and people get so far fetched and away from CrossFit. I try to keep what we do mostly CrossFit, especially when we're talking events. And so I feel like that's a pretty pure CrossFit type workout. There's a little, little strategy in there, you know, like, do you want to hit the row? And then go to the snatch. Do you want to go back to the row? Is somebody better on the bike? You know, so there's a, there's a little strategy to it. But uh, mostly it's, you know, and I kind of like the, all right, both people are working. Both people are fatigued. Who wants to step up and hit that barbell first? And who wants a little bit more rest uh, going to the bike, like, you know, back to the machine? So, um, you know, we didn't want it to be a just completely shared reps. It's a little bit mix of, all right, combined work at the same time, share some reps. So, you know, who's fitter? It's, it's, I don't know. It's, I, I like it. I think it's pretty cool. There's some strategy to it. Yeah. Uh, but it, in, in the same way, it's a lot of fun too, I think. So how, and this will give people insight as they're preparing. And so many people have already done this workout because we released it a few weeks ago. Yep. You know, how, how, you don't know who your partner is yet, but how will you, nope. it? like, what would you, how would you do it? Uh, personally, I, the bike, I feel like is a little bit slower. So, um, whoever's better on the bike, I would have them go on the bike. And then, um, as far as the snatch and clean and jerk go, I personally fives, if you can do some touch and go sets, maybe a set of three and then two singles touch and go, or just five singles, fast singles versus one to one back and forth. I feel like you get a little bit more of a rest or even threes. Um, but doing singles back and forth might, um, punish you a little bit more Time uh, but, yeah um, but you know if you feel like getting back on the machine um, you're going to be more fresh just doing singles back and forth that might be better for you but uh, five at 135 or whatever how, it's not in, in your mind how much is the difference between somebody whether they do three or fives dropping every time or actually holding on to it it really, honestly, um, there's not that much time lost as long as, you know, I'm not really sure how the plates and the floor is going to be, yeah. but that's going to play into it. Um, but if you can do fast singles, it really is not going to tax. It's going to tax you way less and it might be a few seconds slower over the full yeah. 60 reps. Um, like I said, even if you want to go three and two or something like that, we've done that before in certain workouts, but uh, it's just managing that fatigue, that grip. Somebody's going to have to go back to that rower. Yeah. Um, and then back to the, the clean and jerk. And then there's a one rep max after that. So would you switch who does that or would you, is it up kind to of depends. And that's, you're going to kind of talk in the middle of it and say, Hey, you know, you're going to have a plan going into it. Everybody's going to have a plan. You should have some type of plan. Hey, here's what we're going to do. Um, but if somebody's like, man, my arms are blown up, you know, somebody has to be willing to, to step up and, and take yeah. the extra load if they need to. So uh, it's really just being smart. You know, the, your arms will get a little bit more taxed doing the row I feel like however uh, the row might be a little bit faster so mm. you're, you're playing you know six one way half dozen the other so yeah and is there a pacing strategy or is it just like let's go let's get this annoying 30 calories out of the way the first 30 is there's you know you're gonna not want to blow yourself actually both of them you're not gonna blow yourself out so you gotta yeah. pick a barbell up so 
yeah, I think it's being smart. Uh, nothing too crazy. You know, for me, I'm thinking maybe around a 14, 1500 if I was on the uh, rower first and then somewhere around four to 500 if I'm on the assault bike um, or echo bike. Echo so, bike. Yeah. Echo bike. So if it's echo bike, you're going to be around 400. So, yeah. Okay, uh, so now we transition after that workout. The way we're doing it is a 20 minute time cap, but in that, you find your one rep max. So basically, if you finish like your 12 minutes, Yep. You got eight minutes. Plenty of time. Have a seat. Yep. You know, if you finish in 18 minutes, then you're probably, you know, pretty quickly getting some weight on the bar. So how do you approach the one right. rep? And tell them what it is. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah, really, really depends on, you know, hey, you're, the good news is you're good and warmed up. You've been on a barbell. Your legs are nice and nice and full of lactic acid. You're good to go. So... Um, you're not going to need a ton of warm up sets if you don't have much time. If you have plenty of time, you know, eight, say you finish that workout in 12 minutes, you should have plenty of time um, to, to hit a one rep max. So, you know, don't rush it. Uh, however, if you don't have much time, you might have to rush it a little bit. And you're already warmed up. So might as well go for something. So for you, and I don't think they heard you say what the, what the actual lift is. Maybe we got to okay. pause out, but you can, I'll let you tell them what their lift is going to be. Yeah, so it's a one rep max snatch. I figured we're already good and warmed up doing some Olympic lifting. Why not do the lift that everybody loves to see and everybody loves to do? Now, here's a question. If you've been power snatching and power cleaning, do you transition to a squat or do you just power? What's your suggestion or thought? I would, I personally, I can lift way more weight sna uh, squat snatching. So, uh, you know, I might hit 135 or whatever just to get, get the legs loosened up and then go for it. So, yeah. Um, should be pretty, pretty good from there. Yeah. And how much, how do you jump up in weight? I mean, if you, let's say you got five minutes, that's probably yeah. where most people will have, they'll have, yeah. you know, four to six minutes. Me personally, probably a one, 135, 155, 185, 205, 225, and then smaller maybe jumps from there for me yeah. personally. Yeah. Um, I haven't lifted a ton lately. I've had a back issue that I've been dealing with still uh, yeah. back again. Oh. And uh, so we'll see. But yeah, 225, you know, under fatigue, depending on how much time you have. Um, I mean, it'll be fun. It'll be cool to see. Yeah, it'll be awesome. Okay, so that's basically event one and two are stacked. And then event yep. three starts with a 400 meter run. Yep. As a pair, 200 wall balls, 20 rope climbs. You know, you got to be done yep. with both things and then finish with a 400 meter run. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually super excited to see this one. Um, I have, we have, this one we've not tested. I just thought it was a cool idea that, you know, you run together, you, one person picks where they want to go. Really, I think it's based off of, you know, what kind of sets you feel like doing on the wall ball, maybe 40s or 50s, while somebody just does max rope climbs. I really don't know which one will be done faster. Yeah. Um, it'll be kind of cool to see. You know, I've done, I've done 20 rope climbs for time, and I've done 200 wall balls for time. So uh, it, it'll be close. Um, what do you so, think will hurt the most? <laughs> wall, wall balls are just terrible. However, you know, if you're using your legs on um, the wall ball, leg rope climbs can really gas you as well. So I, this one, I actually, I'm really excited to see and actually really excited to do. Yeah. Uh, just because I want to see it. You know, I want to so, see which one. You're almost racing your partner, you know. You're racing your partner, yeah. but you're racing everybody else. What would be your suggestion, tip, how are you going to approach it? You know, you mentioned 40, 50 you know, and then, hey, get as many as you can. Yeah, now I'm thinking maybe like 25s might be the smarter option there, 25s on the wall balls, and just have the person rope climb, get as many rope climbs as they can. You know, it's going to be based on, I feel like maybe the rope climbs, depending on, you know, people's endurance on rope climbs. We do a ton around here. So, you know, if it was myself and Tasia or somebody like that, uh, we might actually finish the rope climbs first. Mm. So, I, I don't know. I'm, that's, I'm, I'm, I want to see this one. I want to do this yeah. one. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's a, it, um, not to toot my own horn, I think it's a pretty cool uh, yeah. event. Uh, it that might last, not, no, that, no. that last run after wall balls, you know, is going to be yeah. a, just. It's going to be dirty. Yeah. You're <laughs> not going to be able to breathe. Your legs are going to be shot. Um, I, I do kind of wish there was a way to tell the fans where everybody was. That's going to be the hard part. Um, you know, kind of telling that story because you want people to be able to know what's going on. But I think it'll still be cool. Yeah. Awesome, man. So we've got event four, which is the just, you know, nobody, I, I don't think anybody loves burpee box jump overs, 
No. Nope. We've got 15 synchro burpee box jump overs, 90 double unders at the same time, 15 synchro burpee box jump overs, 60 synchro total bar, back to the burpee box jump overs for 15, 90 double unders, finishing with 15 burpee box jump overs. So kind of how did you come up with that? Yeah, uh, it's kind of a little bit based on what we did last year uh, with you guys. That, I just remember how awful those burpee box jump overs. Uh, they're just not fun. The double unders there to just gas you a little bit, fry the calves, and then uh, we want to do some grip with the toes to bar. And then this this one's just a gut check. It's not a, it's, this is not a fun workout, really. This is kind of um, – there is a little bit of skill and a little bit of, you know, grip endurance with the uh, toes to bar. Um, but, you know, I think it's uh, – this one's just going to have to hurt a little bit and, and yeah. want to go to that dark, dark place, which I think is fun. What's your approach? How, how would you uh, attack this workout? Smooth, smooth on the um, burpee box jump overs and then double unders, try not to break them up. And then toes to bar, you know, depending on how you feel and how your toes to bar are, um, you know, obviously depending on who's the weaker person on the toes to bar, just go, don't let them go to failure. Yeah. Um, manage, manage rest because you're going to have to go back. Um, and then toes to bar and burpees are a nasty combo, actually, because yeah. your core is so fried that when you bring your feet up on the burpees as well, your core is also engaged there. So this is, this is going to be a fun one. That 60, uh, you know, toe to bar in the middle, you know, and this goes back to kind of what we talked about earlier is like, you know, you can see a workout when the numbers are pretty, you know, a is mm -hmm. the only person that would ever think that, you know, <laughs> right. right. Um, what prevented you from saying 90, right? Like here's just where the, the fun part of it is. How, how did you, yeah. how'd you settle on 60 or 45, right? Divide 90 divided by two, yeah. you know? Yeah. So they're all 15s. Everything's divisible by 15 there. Everybody saw, you see that. Um, yeah. I mean, I know for us, 90, if I was to do like a, if this was a, a games or a team games workout, 90 is probably the right number there. But yeah. I don't want people standing there staring at, a, at the bar. You know, we want to, we want, you want to be able to showcase, hey, hey, I can do some toes to bar while fatigued, but I don't want people just standing there um, for a long time. So I thought 60, 90 was a little bit of a reach. 60 might be a little bit on the light side. Um, yeah. I guess we could have thrown a 75 in there if we wanted to, but you know, yeah, no, look, awesome. look at the number. yeah, I like it, man. Okay. So that's the events. So let's transition to, you know, the fundraiser piece to this yep. right? last yep. year. That was, you know, just from your side, right. Of coming down here, not knowing who you're competing with, yeah. working out with John Devlin and, um, the amazing, you know, amount of fundraising that was done for that. How awesome. was that for you? Oh, it's great. Super rewarding. Uh, you know, John, John's a really cool, got a cool dude. He's got a really cool story and then raised a ton of money for Ronald McDonald house. And just to see how fired up he was. And, and he was all business ready to compete. And, uh, you know, he's been training for it. So I'm, yeah. I'm really looking forward to that piece of it. You know, I, I, I'm a competitor and that's what I want to do. And so, uh, having him down there and was, he was just, like I said, he was business, man. We were talking strategy before the workouts and I'm like, all right, I thought I was just coming down here to just, you know, have some fun. And, um, you know, it, it was great. It was a good, great time. So I'm really looking forward to doing that again. I think there's a piece on that video and it was either, he told me this in person or in the video, but basically he's holding on to the bar for total bar. And yep. Gone. It, and it was like people weren't cheering on for you to do it. They were cheering on him nope. to hold on. <laughs> to hang on. Yeah. yeah. It was like he was there one second and gone the next. Like, and then he apologized. I was like, dude, you literally went to failure. It was amazing. That was yeah. one of the coolest things ever to see. He was, he was going to hang on with all he had. And he did. And then it wasn't like, oh, he fell down, like hands gave out, fell to his like feet. He was gone. Gone. Yeah. And so it was awesome. <laughs> well, was man, awesome. I, yeah, that fired me up. So I'm excited to kind of see who you end up with this year, and just yep. really, uh, you know, the, the the fundraising piece is really a big. My uh, my family was touched by Ron McDonald House Charities. I shared with you my son, who's now 18 yep. months when he was born, and so it's a great organization. And so we're just super grateful that we can tie that into the event. Um, right. Okay. So the last thing we'll talk through is kind of some of the ways that people currently engage with your programming, right? Because yeah. there's, you know, there's a few options. You said now you guys have kind of simplified it. You're either on the competitor package, yep. which includes 
other, you know, options or, or inside of it or the everyday athlete package. So tell me about those two and like how you know where you are as, an, yeah. as a customer, as a person. Yeah, so, who right. Yeah. So basically we have two kind of technically three options. You've got the, the competitors um, and this is anybody who wants to do a local competition, wants to be able to do something RX or even elite if you wanted to and back who knows if we're going to have sanctionals since everything changes every year. Um, but, you know, somebody that wants to compete a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit, want to do more than their, you know, actual gym programming. So you have the, the competitor side and you go, what's Rich doing, which is literally what I do. Uh, competitor, which is pretty close to what I do, but we've also kind of Monday morning quarterbacked it a little bit. And there's a little bit more of a plan to it per se. Um, then you have some of our accessory program on there. You have uh, access to Mayhem Strength, which Darren programs and does a really good job of. And then I think you actually, with the competitor side, you get access to everything. That's kind of our top level. So you'll get the M60 and M30. Um, and then the everyday athlete is literally that. It's somebody who wants to be fit, wants to do stuff RX, um, maybe doesn't want to compete. Everyone wants to do a com uh, competition. That's your everyday athlete. It's M60. So that's pretty much a compete workout, but done in 60 minutes, um, relatively limited equipment, and then M30 and M30 plus, which are kind of at home and dumbbell, literal, you know, like very minimal equipment. So those are our two, but then we've also done some pretty cool stuff over the last couple months where um, the first session for your uh, athlete, like competitor program, um, we have, they have access to a, a YouTube live Monday through Thursday, where we do the workouts with them, the first session. Oh, cool. Um, and then, for the everyday athlete. Yeah, it's fun. It's been really fun. So there's like 50 people that get on there and just on YouTube and chime in back and forth. And uh, we've got a pretty cool little uh, group. You know, everything's through Sugar Watt as well, but we have that YouTube live group um, that people can, can and the, the videos are archived so everybody can go back and watch them. Um, and then for the M30, Ellie goes through the M30 every morning um, as well. So there's that YouTube live as well. So we've uh, been doing some pretty cool stuff and it's been fun to kind of you know like there's days where you're like man i really don't feel like doing this but yeah uh it gives you that little extra push and then having the community side of it and like like i said there's 30 anywhere from 30 mostly most days like 40 to 45 it keeps creeping up a little bit more and uh wow. you kind of you don't really see their faces but their personalities are on the youtube uh, chat and so yeah it's been a ton of fun to do that and get to know everybody and yeah. um it's been great well, and it's a cool way that they can experience training with you, right? Yeah. Virtual, yeah. you know, yep. and it's included. And kind of see how we break yeah. it up and ask questions. And like, they may not be, some people are doing the workout in their garage or wherever they are at the same time we do. Yeah. And then some are just kind of peeping in and, you know, checking in, talking to everybody and seeing what we do and how we do it for later. So yeah. uh, it's been a ton of fun. And so the next one is the affiliate programming. And how, how long did you guys, how long ago did y'all to do this? So we started this last couple months ago, or last couple months. And so Darren, my cousin Darren, who's been yeah. the head coach at Mayhem for years, and he moved back to Michigan, um, he actually does it. So the way we've been doing it is we'll, we program the Mayhem class workout two weeks ahead of what the affiliate workout is. So we have time to see our, our members are the test dummies yeah. uh -huh. um, and make the necessary changes to get the correct stimulus. And Josh here, who's the head coach now, We'll give Darren some feedback and, hey, this was too hard. This was too easy. The, the hour didn't work. And so then Darren goes through, analyzes it, puts it to the Mayhem Athlete um, affiliate program. Yeah, it's like and a polished final product, basically. Perfect, yep. And then Darren will go through and give coaching notes, coaches tips, scaling options, like, hey, this is, you know, how we ran it, how this worked, how this didn't work. And so uh, he's done a great job of that. It's a pretty cool product, actually. And so part of the thing we're talking about doing – is we're going to RV down to uh, the BCS Classic, and we may try to find a, a Mayhem Athlete uh, gym on the way and try to drop in. So we're looking at the route right now and seeing if we have any affiliates relatively close, um, but we're actually talking about this January doing a, a little uh, Mayhem Affiliate yeah. uh, road no, trip. Right. So, man, so not only do you write it, but you show up, man. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Now, the question is, what would you do at the affiliate? Would you do the workout with the oh, class? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, we cool. jumped in. So we talked about so we could hit multiple affiliates a day. Um, if they're in the same area-ish, you know, within a couple hours of each other, we talked about maybe doing the class workout that morning 
or one of the competitor workouts in the afternoon, just so we're not doubling up on the same workout. But yeah. I think it'd be fun. It'd be a good time. That's awesome, man. Um, okay, last thing, you, the, I guess another way that people can um, work out with you, do your programming, is the train with Rich. And you guys, have yep. done, you've done 17 of these, right? 17 or 18. Yeah, you're, I think you're on 18. 25 of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yep. So, I first, feel, like, feel how, like I've been doing this for so long. Right, I know. You've been training with Rich forever. <laughs> yeah, that's but right. Yeah, every day. How did, how did you come up with this idea? Like, this is so cool. Like, 30 or 40, it seems like 40 people show up at your barn or your, house or your gym. Yeah, so – it was, it was after 14 when I decided to step away. You know, everybody had been trying to get me to do something like that for years, and I felt like I couldn't give away my trade secrets when I was an individual, even though there's not really any secrets whatsoever. <laughs> um, so we just decided, hey, let's try to, you know, we, we actually cap it at 30, and then we have some kind of like, you know, we have some athletes that will come in and help out with it. And, you know, we felt like if we, we could, obviously we could house 50 or 60, but I feel like it starts to water down the experience. Like we want people to have a really good experience and have some fun and um, work out as much as they want to with us or hang out and just watch, you know, like it's literally whatever people want to make out of the weekend, they can, you know, like, Hey, here's what we're going to do. Jump in. Let's do this. If you don't feel like it, if you want to scale it, if you want to, you know, you've got something going on. We've had people that have never done CrossFit before when we've had some games level athletes here. So, um, it's, it's a ton of fun and, you know, kind of everybody shows up on Friday, kind of super nervous, a little bit, you know, reserved. And then after that first workout's over, first two or three workouts are over on Friday night, kind of depends. Um, then Saturday, we, you know, kind of hit it all day. We may go on a field trip, you know, to dads. We've done that a couple of times. There's some waterfalls or some trails around here. We've done that a couple of times. And then it's pretty much work out throughout the day on Saturday, uh, have a little barbecue Saturday night, and then Sunday um, we'll do a little devotional. We do some Q&As mixed in on Saturday as well, and then we'll do a Q&A on Sunday morning and then work out and send everybody on their way around noon, 1 o'clock. So it's been, uh, it's been awesome just to see the, the group of people that show up, and then it's really kind of blows my mind. We've had people here eight, nine times. Like it's, it's wow. like their little vacation, you know, a couple times a year, and they come get their butt kicked for a weekend, but – it's yeah. uh it's awesome it's cool just like that first because i never look at the list of people that are coming and we'll kind of go that little first debrief and i'm like oh they've been here oh they've been here oh you've been here like eight times like so it's, <laughs> it's been uh it's been fun and then each time they come they get a little bit of a discount as well so um it's a it's a fun group and a fun weekend and it sounds like a, like a really good bonding weekend right for yeah. just yeah. community and, and having people right. come together yeah it's it's also like i said it's super laid back um, you know, there's not a ton of like, if people are coming for a seminar, that's not really what it is. Obviously we'll coach you along. If you want help with something, we'll help you. But, uh, it's more about having fun and, and getting to know people and getting to know people in the community and, you know, people that do our programming or, uh, have, you know, just been fans of ours for a while or, uh, you know, buy our apparel. We just want to, you know, have some fun. So it's, yeah. it's really, really a good time. Are the workouts created in advance or is that something that that weekend you kind of just start nope. on the on whiteboard the, on the fly fly by seat of <laughs> our pants there's some that we we've, we've noticed work really well so we'll do versions of those or variations of those and sometimes the weekend can be completely different yeah that's awesome man so when's the next one do you have a date yet? uh i think it's september 26th through the 28th i think i'm not a don't quote me on that it's that weekend whatever that is i can't remember what it is Awesome, man, dude. Well, we are so pumped to see you down here in just uh, two and a half weeks and uh, see you compete and just be yeah. here again in College Station. So I really appreciate you taking the time to do this today, man. Looking forward to it, man. I appreciate it. Awesome, Rich.